Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I love you more than in Lord, I love you more than in need to stop spectating and start participating. Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh. Things change when you call on the name Jesus. Things change when you call on the name Jesus. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what would happen if you if you not considered that that just happens for somebody. Like if you said, if it happened for her, it could happen for me. Like if you said, if she had a breakthrough, I could have a breakthrough. Like if, if God healed her, he can heal me. I'm just wondering if there's two or three witnesses, if God did it for The Bible says he is no respecter of person. If he healed my sister, if he healed my mama, if he healed my daddy, he can heal me. And sometimes maybe I just got to do something I never did if I want to get something I never had. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to stop just coming to church. I'm going to stop just coming to church. I'm going to stop just coming to spectate. I, I didn't just come here to spectate. I didn't just come here to look cute. I look cute, but I didn't just come here to look cute. I came here to give God the praise. And God told me, because of the guarantee of two or three, when two or more gather together in my name, there also shall I be right there in the midst. So if you need God in your situation, if you need God in your circumstance, I dare you to take about three or four seconds and just give God a reward. I didn't come here just to look cute. I came here to hook up with somebody because something in you is going to make something in me wake up. And something in me is supposed to make something in you wake up. And when we hook up together, one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put Glad when they... Me. So I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. 
of the Lord. Come on, just take about 10 seconds. Let's give God some praise right now. Come on. Turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. We're going to start reading at verse 13. And as is our custom here, we stand for the reading of the word. Uh, from a technical perspective, I'm going to ask that y'all get my other mic ready because faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. It's good that you hear this again and hearing <laughs> and hearing. So I need y'all to, I, I need you to just release this in the atmosphere. Let me hear today, Lord. Come on, open up your mouth. Let me hear today, Lord. Because there is a word from the Lord. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Everybody feel all right? Good. People got baptized this morning. We're going to dig deeper into that in a second. We're going to dig deeper into that. Because I didn't come here to play this morning. I did not come for play play this morning. I almost didn't make it here because I was so deep in my study. I looked up, the clock said 1145. I said, oh, I got to teach this. <laughs> I was so busy eating. I don't know about any of y'all, but did y'all enjoy your Thanksgiving? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I find that uh, I enjoy my cooking. So much so that by the time it's time to eat, Mika, <laughs> somebody else know how to cook over there. By the time it's time to eat, and I'm, I'm ready. To, um, I just fix a little plate. I'm already gonna let my family down. So today I'm here to just fix a little plate because I don't want to let y'all down. But I already um, <laughs> sucked this morning. Amen. But come on, let's eat together. I'm going to make sure everybody gets served. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 16. So, so, somebody is vexing my spirit. Somebody got a praise in their heart. And I'm going to get you. I'm going to cede my time to you. I'm going to turn over my time to you. There's something happening. It might be right over here somewhere. Too. Matthew 16, verse 13. Come on, let's do some work. Let's do some work. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say that I am? And they said, some say you're John the Baptist reincarnated. That's not possible. We both existed at the same time. In fact, that's my first cousin. <laughs> In fact, that's my cousin. We just ate Thanksgiving together. Uh, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. That's also not possible. Elijah spoke of a soon coming king. I am that soon coming king. I am not equal to the person who spoke of the soon coming king. I am the soon coming king that he was speaking about. Others say it's Jeremiah. Equally, if Elijah was a major prophet, Jeremiah was a minor prophet. If I'm greater than Elijah, I'm certainly greater than you. Or one of the other prophets. But then he said to him, who do you say that I am. Simon Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of a living God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, help me help them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. High five three people and say, who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus?
and they turned off my clock, so that means I got all the time in the world. Who is this Jesus? In Acts chapter 2, Peter uh, begins sermonizing one, one of his, actually one of his greatest sermons. Y'all don't mind if I, if I read from my notes today, right? I don't want to miss nothing. You need all of this. Amen. You know how, I'm going to go back to Thanksgiving. You know how you got to check the recipe real quick. Make sure you didn't forget to save. Make sure you. If you ain't cooking with sage on Thanksgiving, I don't want none. All right. Sorry. We <laughs> back to, come back to. In Acts chapter 2, Peter is sermonizing one of his greatest calls to salvation. One of the greatest calls to salvation ever. In this uh, exception of what we, inception of what we now know as a Christian church, during this rousing speech, right at about verse 32, Peter says, this Jesus. He says, this Jesus. Now, this, this is significant because we all assume that we all were talking about the same Jesus all through the chapter. But in verse 32, Peter comes out and says, no, 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 I need to make sure that you are talking about the same Jesus I'm talking about. Okay, all right. He says, I need to make sure that you're talking about the same Jesus that I'm talking about. And so that means that just 50 short days, 50 short days after Jesus had been crucified and resurrected, there were, there were, there were um, rumors and innuendo about who Jesus was. There was some disconnect about who Jesus was. There was some disconnect. There were some opinions. And people had some, their own thoughts about Jesus. And that's what happens when, when people don't have an experience with you, but they hear a story about you. They start moving on with their own thoughts and ideas about who you are, and some of those may be inaccurate, and they won't accurately know who you are until they have a real experience. But 50 days, just 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, people have already come into some confusion about who Jesus is. Somebody say, who is this Jesus? 2,000 years later, there's still some confusion about who Jesus is. There's still some confusion about who Jesus is. And if you want to you wanna know what that confusion is, just talk to about 200 different people. You're going to get 200 different answers about who Jesus is. And my fear is that we're about to go into a season of celebration for the life of Jesus, a Jesus that we don't know. Somebody say, who is this Jesus? Like I said, if you ask 200 people about Jesus, you'll get 200 different answers. Books have been written about Jesus by people who don't know him. Plays have been written about Jesus by people who don't know him. Songs have been sung about Jesus by people who don't know him. Movies have depicted Jesus by people who don't know him. Many have tried to capture his image, but few have captured his essence. Who is this Jesus? Somebody say, who is this Jesus? Various polls come out. They, they take polls all the time. And they, 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 there is this poll that is out that's been um, pretty much for the last 40 years straight. And the poll is simply this. Who is the most famous person in the history of the world? Who is the most famous person in the history of the world? And still today, still today, 2,000 years after his existence, the most famous person in the history of the world is Jesus. For two years in the, in the arts, in the, in the teens, for about two years in the arts, Jesus, Jesus lost. He, 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 he lost. He came in second place to Mahatma Gandhi. Somebody say Mahatma Gandhi. Don't worry. Don't, we'll get there. Mahatma Gandhi is a, he, is a Hindu priest. But Mahatma Gandhi says that he based a lot of his life on the life and teachings of Jesus. Now, my problem with Mahatma Gandhi is that you can see Jesus and you can imitate Jesus, but you can never be Jesus because you didn't die as a ransom for my sins. Somebody say, who is this 
Jesus. See, there have been many to imitate Jesus. There have been many to imitate the life of Jesus. And there have been many to do great things and, and to serve great works. But until you know Jesus, your life, your life, your life will never truly matter. Yeah, I came to frighten you today. Because I'm tired of knowing church and not knowing Jesus. And I'm tired of knowing sermons and not knowing Jesus. I'm tired of knowing. See, you can know scriptures, but not know Jesus. Because although Jesus said he is the word of God, he cannot be encapsulated by 66 books. So you can, oh, y'all missed that. He cannot be in, so you can read about Jesus in the word, but until the word has been revealed to you yourself, you won't know Jesus. Somebody say, who is this Jesus? So I want to talk today uh, 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 about Jesus. First, the first step to wisdom often is knowing who Jesus is not. Let me say it in a better way. You won't seek knowledge until you know what you don't know. If you think you know it all, you'll never seek to learn more. So I can't approach Jesus thinking I know it all because then I'll never know any more than I already know. I got to approach Jesus in a way that says, no, I need more, Jesus. I need more of you. I need more of your essence. I need to know who you are. Even when I'm reading the Bible, I don't read the Bible, uh, I don't read the Bible as, as just the graphe. Somebody say the graphe. I don't read the Bible. Whoever this is calling me, they don't know me. Because <laughs> if you knew me, you know what. Didn't you know that I would be in the house of the Lord? Okay. <laughs> so, so if you just read the graphe, somebody say graphe. Graphe is what's written in the word. It's the written text. Somebody say written text. Okay. So graphe is the written text. So graphe is what it says. Logos. Logos is the revealed text, okay? So if I'm reading the Bible, I'm reading the graphe, that's what it says. Logos is what it means. That's why you got to get a you got to get a true perception of what it means because you won't understand the word. You won't understand the word until you know what the word means. Are y'all with me? Graphe is what it says. Logos is what it means. But 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 there's another level. It's called rhema. If graphe is what it says and logos is what it means, then rhema is. Mm -mm. No, y'all, let me preach. <laughs> if graphe is what it says and logos is what it means, then, then rhema is how it applies to your purpose. And you need, to be, you need to be able to read the word on three different levels. I'm reading the graphe. I see what it says. I, I, I'm studying. I'm reading the concordances so that I can understand what it means. But I got to add that third element. That third element is when I pray to God and say, God, reveal this to me. Because it doesn't matter what it says in this page. If it don't apply to my life. It doesn't matter what it says in these books. If it doesn't apply to my life. So, God, I need the rhema. I can know what you're trying to say to me. Somebody say, who is this Jesus? I had a friend tell me once, we were, uh, we were engaging in an argument through text. Or actually, on social media. We were engaging in an argument, and I, I assumed that he knew the Jesus that I knew. See, some of y'all, you make a bad, <laughs> you, you, you'll make a bad estimation thinking that everybody has experienced the Jesus you've experienced. And what I appreciate about this fool, I mean this guy, <laughs> is that he had the honor to text me and say, don't assume, don't assume that the God, when I say God, I mean the God that you know of. He had the honor to text me and say, don't assume that when I say Jesus, I'm talking about the same Jesus you're talking about. Lord have mercy. I want to help you today, God chasers. Don't assume 
That every time you're having a conversation with somebody, they're talking about the same Jesus you talking about. They're talking about the same God you talking about because they might have read about him and they might have heard about him, but until they had an experience, I learned a valuable lesson that, way, that day. Everyone who uses the name Jesus hasn't had an experience with the name Jesus. Everyone who uses the name God is not talking about the same God that I'm talking about. Who is this? Jesus. So I went to the church. You look for Jesus in some churches, you'll find a mean, vindictive monster who only cares <laughs> about the length of skirts. And rather than not, you put makeup on your blemishes. A Jesus who is ultimately only concerned with your appearance more than your motive, your outfit more than your intentions, your makeup more than the face you put Oh, your makeup more than your made up mind. Who is this Jesus? I've seen some churches where, uh, where you can have a good hat but a bad heart and still get to heaven. I visited some churches where even more deeply, once you get jumped into a denominational game, When you get jumped into a denominational game for membership, that, that's, that says that I get to go to heaven when everybody else who doesn't look like me, dress like me, talk like me, pray like me. Everyone else can literally go to hell. Who is this Jesus? See, to know him means that I can't be mean <laughs> because he was perfect and his perfection should show me that I'm not. I love when Ebony was testifying today. She said, I'm not perfect, but I'm radically different than I was. Oh, Jesus. That was, oh, Jesus. But to know Jesus, to truly know Jesus, means that even though I'm radically different, I'm still nasty. But because I'm nasty, I can't be nasty to other people. He who has been forgiven much is grateful much. I can't be mean and vindictive telling everybody how they're going to go to hell when I got some issues I got to deal with myself. Who is this? Jesus. Mm. Scared to say this next one. I'm just playing. See, when I really know Jesus and when I really know me, then I know how dirty I am. So I, I can't be nice to the whoremonger, but mean to the homosexual. God's been too good to all of us. God's been too wonderful to all of us. Who is this Jesus? I've been to some other churches, though. I, I've been to, I've visited a thousand churches. I've been to some other churches. In those churches, you'll find a weak white Jesus who never corrects anybody, never confronts anybody, never cajoles anybody, and never condemns anybody, who will let you do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, with whomever you want to do it with. Living a life that's totally just pleasing to God and using the grace of God as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Who is this? Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? that doesn't condemn sin? Who is this Jesus that doesn't correct you? Who is this Jesus? How can you go to church for 50 years and nobody never tell you to stop doing that mess you're doing? Who is this? Somebody say, who is this Jesus? Side note, my Savior, mm, thank you, Jesus. My Savior didn't die so you could sin freely. My Savior died so you could be free from sin. It's a small distinction, but it's a distinction nonetheless. Who is this? Jesus. See, the problem with most of us is that we're trying to make Jesus look like the picture, the definition, the definition that we define. But you don't understand that Jesus defines himself. Somebody say Jesus defined himself. Jesus breaks all the rules, all the social rules, all the economic rules, all the grammatical rules. Pastor Dante, what are you talking about? Well, they taught me in grammar that you can't use the word to define the word. 
y'all must have offered to Sam. He said, you can't, you can't use the word to define the word. But, but Jesus said, no, 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 I am the word, and you can use the word to define the word. In fact, the only way you're going to get an idea about the word is by looking in the Who is this? Jesus. In fact, in John chapter 1, he says this. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he in the beginning was with God, and all things who came into existence came into existence through the word, and apart from him, nothing came into being that exists. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is important, because you'll never know what you don't know till you have a relationship with Jesus. The, the more you have a relationship with the light, the more you realize you're dark. And I can't stand in a pulpit and act like I am the light just because I have the light. Who is this? Jesus. Knowing what you don't know is the beginning of knowledge. Say that. So I want to tell you who Jesus is not. Okay? I want to tell you who Jesus is not. Peter is having a conversation with Jesus. You know how we opened up our text. Peter is having a conversation with Jesus, and Jesus gets curious. And Jesus says, who, who do men say that I am? Let me uh, help you with this. Don't do that unless you're really ready to hear people think about you. Let me say it to this side. That side. That's how I mad dog me a little bit. Don't, don't, don't. Don't ask how people feel about you until you're really ready to hear. Some of y'all not ready to hear. That's why I help you. But don't come sit in my office and ask. I'm bound to the truth. That's the problem with most of us. That's why we, we take this part-time approach to church, because we don't want to be told who we really are. We take this part-time approach to church. Maybe if I go once every three weeks or so. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get to the message where, where the grace is being preached. How can you go to church for 50 years and never hear about sin? Never hear about hell. Never hear about weeping and gnashing of teeth. Never hear about worms that never die. I'll be doing you a disservice. So I want to tell you who Jesus is not. Peter, Peter looked at Jesus and he said, thou art the Christ. But I wonder if he, if he started with, who is, he, who is he not? I wonder if he started with, thou art not a Republican. woke some of the Republicans up on the live stream. <laughs> Here, let me help you with this. Jesus was not a Republican. Jesus was not a weak, fragile man that was afraid of other people who don't look like him. Jesus was not a Jesus who crossed the street because he was scared of what was going to happen if he stayed on the side with somebody who was a darker tone than him. <laughs> Jesus doesn't run from people who are different from him, from him. Jesus runs to people who are different from him. Let me help you. Je Jesus doesn't build walls to keep the hopeless and the helpless out. Jesus builds bridges to let the hopeless and the helpless in. Who is this weak Jesus? When, when one of the most challenging sermons that Jesus ever preached was about an immigrant man who offers welfare, social housing, who offers welfare and social housing to someone who had fallen on hard times. Who is this Republican Jesus? Well, some of y'all clapping, but Jesus is not a Democrat. Jesus is not a weak, noodle-backed, post-church, post-Christianity, love everybody, hippie who sips lattes and argues on Facebook while people dying and going to hell. Jesus is not a Democrat. 
people starving in the streets and you paying seven dollars for a coffee. Jesus is not a Democrat. Jesus is not this hyper-liberal, super-liberal Jesus who, who tries his best to make the kingdom fit in the culture. When the kingdom and the culture are at odds, there's no way to fit the kingdom in the culture. You need to get the culture to the kingdom. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this Jesus? We have a responsibility. <laughs> Hear me right here. We have a responsibility to love everybody and to care for everybody, but that don't mean you got to allow everybody to do whatever the hell they want to do. That's not Jesus. I'm going to help somebody else in here. Jesus is not a Hebrew Israelite. So that I can use the same anger and oppression that oppressed us for 400 years, turn it around and oppress somebody else with it for 400 years and say that I'm the only one going to heaven and all y'all going to hell. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Jesus wasn't a his Hebrew. Whatever. Get out of here. In fact, the Bible does not discuss it, no matter what you've heard. No matter what you've heard, the Bible never discusses Jesus' skin color, not once, not at all. The Bible never discusses Jesus' skin color, not once, not at all. I think he did it on purpose. Because all men, uh, hear me right here, because all men, you know what, Dominique? Because of whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Who is this Jesus? Thou art not a Republican. Thou art not a Democrat. Thou art not a baby. Oh, let me wrap this up, boy. Thou art not a baby. See, it's easy. It's easy to talk about the baby Jesus. It's easy to talk about the baby Jesus, and that's why we spend our whole Christmases talking about baby Jesus, little lamb, little. It's, it's hard to talk about a, our king that reigns forever. It's hard to talk about a king that reigns forever and a king who will judge sin. We want to talk about a baby. Jesus came as a baby, but he didn't die as a baby. He died as a king, and, he, and he'll return as a king. When he come back, he's not coming back as a baby. My problem with seeing Jesus as a baby is this. It's extremely difficult to escape someone's initial perspective of you. Oftentimes, when people meet you at the root stage, they can't accept you at the fruit stage. So they treat you. But if you see Jesus as a baby, then you won't see him as a king. If you see the Magi, I'm going to talk about the Magi next week. I just want to introduce this a little bit. Uh, uh, the, the title of this sermon is Game Changer, just so you, just so you know. Jesus was a game changer. He changed the game. You know, you know that time changed when Jesus was born? We were going, we were counting backwards. Now we count forward. Oh, y'all missed something because you never had an experience with Jesus when you was going backwards. And then all of a sudden, Jesus was born and you said, oh, I got to turn around and go. I was at a, a, a dinner with my family uh, a couple of days ago, and one of my uncles referred to one of my uh, little cousins a, as his nickname for when he was a kid. He got real upset. <laughs> like, real upset. Like, disrespectful upset. <laughs> Because even though he's my little cousin, he's a grown man. He don't want to be referred to as a little boy. So he said, he proceeds to tell my uncle. My uncle said, how are you doing today? And he said, I'd be doing better if you didn't call me out my name. Now, when I was young, we got whooped for stuff like that. I'm using the term whooped loosely because getting a pan thrown at your mouth is sort of like a whooping. <laughs> sort of how we define whooping. Because when he said that, I ducked. I was like, oh. 
and I'm grown, grown. But where I'm from, you don't talk to your, anyway. He said, I'll be doing much better if you don't talk, if you don't call me that name. I ain't going to tell y'all. Y'all want to know so bad. He said, I'll be doing much better if you don't call me that name. And, I, and my uncle did, he, he, it was so great. He said, oh, no, I didn't mean to disrespect you. That's how I know you. Now, I love this because the uncle, he still go by his childhood nickname. And he's 60. And they still call him by his childhood name. So, of course, he can understand where you coming from you oh yeah i need y'all to get this back in the bible because i uh, because of course jesus can understand your plight because he went through the same thing you going through he went through the same situation that you're going through and if you don't serve a god who cannot who has not been touched by the infirmities man who is this jesus but jesus is not a baby jesus himself even said he said he said it's not a prophet is a prophet not without honor except in his own home let me help you right here. People, people who are too familiar with you will never see the change that God made in your life. You need to learn how to forgive them and move on. You need to learn how to forgive them and move on. Forgive them and move on. Forgive them and move on. Some of y'all needed this message before Thanksgiving. It's too late now. I'm sorry. <laughs> you already started a fight. Y'all threw plates and stuff. I'm still okay. Forgive them and move on. Amen. <laughs> forgive them and move on. But, but understand this, uh, don't get so familiar with the child that you miss the Christ. Don't get so familiar with the baby and the manger that you miss the man. Jesus is the only baby ever that came to die. He came to die as a ransom for your sins. Who is this Jesus? I'll give you a couple more. Jesus is not a rabbi. Somebody say Jesus is not a rabbi. I'm not saying that he didn't teach, but he wasn't just a teacher. Now, now, why does that matter? Well, when Peter met Jesus in the first place, a, a guy named John the Baptist introduced him to Jesus, and he said, he said, he said, here comes God who comes to take away the sins of the world. And then Peter looked at Jesus and said, teacher, wait, no, you missed the revelation. You missed the revelation. Now, John said, here comes the God who comes to take away. Now, behold, the Lamb of God who come to take away the sins of the world. But when you approached him, you called him teacher. If you miss, oh, hear me right here. If you miss who Jesus is, you're going to miss what Jesus has. God is trying to give you something. He's trying to bless you with something. But if you miss who he is, you, you, you might miss what he has. I'm going to deal with this again for a second. This is why you okay with missing church. Not just my church. Find any church. Find the church that you can go to and get who Jesus is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if I don't get who he is, I'm going to miss what he has. And if I, if I can't find two hours, hear me right here. If I can't find two hours to figure out more about Jesus, then I'm going to miss the blessing that's associated with knowing who he is. Who is this Jesus? I don't want to listen to him as a teacher if I can't lean on him as a savior. I don't want to listen. I could listen to Mahatma Gandhi. I could listen to Martin Luther King. God bless all their lives. I could listen to all these different people. But the truth is, I need a savior. I don't just need a teacher. The problem with most of us, hear me right here, the problem with most of us in church is that we only see Jesus as a teacher. We only see, so we miss the supernatural because we focus on the natural. We miss the super because we focus on the natural. But Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I don't just want a sermon. I want rest. I don't, I don't just want a lesson, PK. I want rest. Oh, Lord Jesus. I, 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 I know all the alliterative texts, and you can preach to me about the promises of God that's going to happen if the people of God come. Well, I don't need to hear that crap no more. I need Jesus. That's not saving nobody. I need Jesus. If you do all that, make it all rhyme. Say a little poem at the end and start to tune up. But you don't tell me about a good and faithful Savior that I can lean on when I'm in trouble. You missed the whole point. 
You hoarse and sweaty for nothing. Who is this? Jesus. I don't want the Jesus of your denomination. I don't want the Jesus of your church gang. We get t-shirts and bracelets so we can match. We do it too. <laughs> but it would all be for nothing while I wear my I am a priest shirt. Uh, $12 at the... But if I did all that and I didn't get you up here and tell you about Jesus, I'd be a sorry preacher. If I spent $1,000 on my outfit but didn't spend two hours on the word that I was going to preach. Who is this? Jesus. Jesus will not, Jesus, thou art not a prophet. Say, thou art not a prophet. See, see, the prophetic was supposed to speak of Jesus. Y'all come back. I know y'all just been heavy. <laughs> y'all come back. I need y'all with me. Are y'all with me today? Just take 10 seconds and get a Lord of hand praise right here. Ooh, it got heavy for a second. <laughs> Jesus was not a prophet. The prophets spoke of Jesus. The prophets point to Jesus. The prophets spoke about Jesus. Be careful that you don't promote a prophet in the place of Jesus in your life. Kevin, I'm preaching, boy. Because oftentimes, 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 see, 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 understand this, that, that, that there, was a, there was a prophet named Eli, and Eli was the priest of the day. He was the prophet of the day, and there was a new prophet coming up. His name was Samuel, and when Samuel heard the voice of the Lord, it sounded like Eli. Now, I'm not mad at Samuel, because the voice of the Lord should sound like your pastor. Some of y'all. At 3 o'clock in the morning, when you get that what you're doing text, you should hear me say, put that phone down and go back to sleep. But, but, but when you come to me to say, Pastor Dante, did you say this? It is now my responsibility to say, no, I did not. So Samuel comes to Eli. Samuel comes to Eli and he says, I heard you call me. And Eli says, no, son, I didn't call you. And Samuel goes back and lays down. And then he hears his name again, Eli. And then he gets, uh, and Samuel. And then he gets up and he comes to Samuel again. And he says, did you call me? And Samuel said, no, son, I did not call you. Go back to sleep. And then Samuel goes back to sleep and he hears his name again. And he comes back out to Eli and he said, man, you tripping. Because <laughs> three times I've heard your voice. Three times you called me. And Eli was man enough, oh, hear me right here, I'm, I hope I'm helping somebody. Eli was man enough to say, no, 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 it wasn't me, son, but the next time you hear it, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And I hope that there are some prophets here in this age. I hope there's some pastors and some apostles and some ministers that's man enough to say, it's not me. The spirit of the Lord, it's not me was cute, but it's not me. The message was good, but it's not me. The church is growing, but it's not me. Say, so speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You, you, you think the church is growing because you preach good? I know some great preachers with 12 members. You think the church is growing because the music is good? I love our musicians to death, but they're not here for y'all. You think the church is gro growing because the singing is good? Baby, the church is growing because no one comes to the Father unless he's born. Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus that because... 
because you call yourself something, all of a sudden you have all the power of God. You're like a filthy rag, pastor, apostle, prophet. Jesus is not a prophet. Jesus is greater. The prophet should point to Jesus. If your message is, maybe this is not for y'all, let me just, if your message is don't point to Jesus, you're at odds with him. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was to my friends. Jesus is not a prophet. Be careful you don't promote prophets in the place of Jesus in your life. He is not Moses. He is not Elijah. He is not Isaiah. He is the great and soon coming king who Then Peter finally says something that's so significant. He says, instead of saying, thou art not a Republican, thou art not a Democrat, thou art not a baby, thou art not a rabbi, thou art not a prophet. He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, that, 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 that thou art the Christ. Thou art now. Now, sometimes we just say the word Christ and we don't understand who the Christ is, but I'm here to introduce you to the Christ. I'm here to tell you about the Christ today. This whole message was about the Christ today, but I got to identify who he is not so you know who he is. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. See, the people of God, the people of God, the chosen people of God, at this time it was the Jews. Now it's Jew and Greek, Jew and Gentile. Everybody's the chosen people of God. Hear me, Hebrew Israelites. Everybody's the chosen people of God now. It, now it's Jew and Greek. And they were waiting in anticipation for a Messiah. Somebody say a Messiah. They were waiting in anticipation for a Messiah. It was going to be a king who came to, to deliver them from the sins of the world. Are y'all with me? He, it was a king who was coming back for his chosen people. Now, you, this won't matter to you at all unless you are expecting a king to come back for you. This won't help you at all unless you are expecting a soon coming king to come back for you. Because when he looked Jesus in the face and said, thou art the Christ, what he was saying was my wait is over. Who I've been waiting on, who I've been praying about. I need you to understand something. Your wait is over. Who you've been waiting on, who you've been praying about. All that person is is a revelation. Oh, hear me right here. All it is is a revelation that you're waiting on. You know what time morning is? It's when you wake up. It don't matter when you went to sleep. It matters when you wake up. Oh, hear me right here. So what Peter was saying was, I recognize you now. I recognize you now. I recognize you in your holiness. I recognize that you're not just a rabbi. You're not just a teacher. You are the soon coming king who can't take away the sins of the world. Is there anybody expecting a king to come back and rescue them today? Because if you're expecting a king, God said, open up your eyes and look to the hills from which cometh your help, your help coming from the Lord, and everything will change when you realize that the king you've been looking for is right here in your face. The king you've been waiting on, the king you've been expecting. Here, I'm here to tell you, I'm, I'm not here to give you some prophetic mes message that 2020 is going to be different from 2019. You know what I'm here to tell you is that Jesus was going to be in your is going to be in your 2020 like he was in your 2019. And if you learn how to see him different. And if you learn how to see him different, then you'll have a different experience with him. But it's how you see him. It's how you see him. He said, "Thou art Christ, the son of the living God." It's how you see him. I've been chilling with you for three years, but I never saw you as the Christ. I've been hanging with you for years, but I never saw you as the Christ, the Christ who came to change everything. Let me help you right here. Jesus came to change everything. Jesus came to, Jesus said, do you think I came to bring peace? I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. I came to separate mothers and daughters, brothers and sisters. I came to separate. He said, he said, because, because get this, because get this. He, he didn't come to win the game. He came to change the game. And my problem with Christians 
is that we think Christianity are winning and losing. We think Christianity, if I'm winning, God is blessing. If I'm losing, God must be mad at me. God said, you're playing the wrong game. You're playing the wrong game. He said, I came to take away the sins of the world. I came so that when you was winning, hear me right here, you would know that it was me that was helping you win. It was me that was holding you up. It was me that was taking care of you. It was me that was watching over you. But when you start losing, it's still me by your side, connected with you. He said, take up my yoke and lean on me. When you feel like you're losing, you're not losing because I am with you. My rod and my staff, they comfort you. He said, I'll be with you until the end. Lo, I'm with you to the ends of the earth. In fact, he said it like this. The only way you can reign with me is if you suffer with me. Do you know your suffering is connected to your reigning? Stop trying to connect Jesus to whether you win or lose. Stop trying to connect Jesus to what the, what the numbers say in your bank account. I'm trying to help you right here. You, we, we're supposed to serve Jesus despite. You know what that means? Despite. That means it don't matter. It don't matter if my bank account is up, praise the Lord. If my bank account is down, praise the Lord. If I'm married, praise the Lord. If I'm single, praise the Lord. If I'm up, praise the Lord. If I'm down, praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible said Job had, Job had houses, land, children, family, as soon as he lost that stuff, his wife looked at him and said, you need to curse God and die. Job said, how can I curse the God who gave me the stuff in the first place? Just because I don't got the stuff doesn't mean God ain't good. Just because my circumstances are not good doesn't mean it'll be a weak God. Who is this Jesus? That because my circumstances are bad means God is. Who is this Jesus? God is good no matter what. When I'm up, God is good. When I'm down, God is good. He said, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. I'm blessed when I'm, blessed when I'm in. But I'm blessed when I'm out. Is there anybody in here who can say, I'm blessed in the city? I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I'm in. I'm blessed when I'm out. Don't look at my circumstance. My circumstance doesn't define my God. My God defines my circumstance. Take about 45 seconds and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Come on. He said, You keep looking for a sign. He said, you keep looking for a sign. Let me help you right here. If God does the miracle, he's God. If he doesn't do the miracle. This will increase your faith tremendously. Because some of y'all been praying about things that God haven't done yet. 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 Some of y'all been crying about situations that God haven't worked out yet. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, I'm just trying to see your fervency. I'm just trying to see how long you'll stay in there. How long will you hang in there? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? He said, the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man will avail as much. Can you hang in there till I do it? Can you hang in there till I fix it? Can you hang? Who, can, you, can you believe on me? Have a revelation of who the Christ is. See, you want to see the miracle. You want to see the miracle. And then you say, I'll serve the God when I see the miracle. 
But God said, no, I'm the God of miracles. You don't, sir, you don't, you, the, the God is not the miracle. <laughs> the God is not the miracle. You don't worship the miracle. You worship the God of miracles. Jesus said, you weak and perverse generation. You weak and perverse generation. Who, who did he say that to? People who was waiting on the sign. People who, who needed a miracle. People who want to reduce Jesus to their own image of his social economic status. Jesus was rich. Jesus was poor. Jesus had this. Jesus had that. What, the, what does it matter? Thou art the Christ. Who is this Jesus? He said, don't reduce me. Don't, don't reduce me to whether or not your bills got paid. What kind of Jesus is that? You're going to reduce me to that? Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? So good, so beautiful, so pure. Man, I wish I, oh, I wish I had time to say this. So amazing. The Bible says he didn't just come to bring grace. He came to bring grace and truth. If you're selling grace with no truth, that's only half of who he is. Who is this Jesus? Listen, I, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today, especially for those of you who don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You've been coming to church. Let me get back here. You've been coming to church and coming to church and coming to church, but you never truly met Jesus. Listen, I want to help you with this. When I met Jesus, everything in my life changed. You can't have an experience with God. Hear me right here. You cannot have an experience with God and not be changed. That's why I know that there's preachers who don't know Jesus. Because you haven't changed. Pastors who don't know Jesus. Ministers who don't know Jesus. You just know about him. Because when you know him, you'll change. When you know him, you'll change. You don't change to know him, but when you know him, you'll change. People who singing at the choir don't know Jesus. Band members don't know Jesus. Here, I'll make this public declaration. If y'all don't know Jesus, y'all better get right with him. You can't play yourself into heaven. I don't care how good you are. You can't play yourself into heaven. Here I am. Receive, receive me as a preacher today. You better get your life right with Jesus. Ministers praying at the altars don't know Jesus. What kind of crazy foolishness is that? You better get your life right with Jesus. Tired of singing Christmas songs. If you don't know Jesus, you need to get your life right. Here's your opportunity. Here's your opportunity. And I know you say, Pastor Dante, we, 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 we say this prayer all the time, but you, see, the Bible says you got to believe it in your heart. See, the, this is the first part, confessing with your mouth. But then the other part is believing in your heart. And maybe you said it, but you don't believe it. See, it's a step of faith. God says, but if you, then I, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. This is the season. Don't you want your land healed? Don't you want your land healed? Aren't you tired of going through the same thing? Uh, be anxiety and anger all the time. Don't you want your land healed? <laughs> Fighting the same people with different names. You've been in 10 relationships with the same person. Don't you want your land healed? Today is the day. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, th this is the day when everything changes. This is the day when the game actually changes for you. It's not winners and losers. If I'm up, blessed be the name of the Lord. When I'm down, blessed be the name of the Lord. All things work together for the good of them who love him and who are called according to his purpose. This is the season right now. Somebody here, I know you, you, you hear it. You feel it in your spirit right now. God has said, that's it. That's the call. I'm calling you. I'm calling you closer to me. 
you're having palpitations, your leg is shaking, you don't know what to do, God said, I'm calling you closer to me. Humble yourself. This is the day. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want to be different. I want to be new. I want to be close to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, with every head still bowed and every eye closed, if you said that prayer for the first time or, or if you meant it for the first time, if you meant it for the first time and you want to receive a real change, you said, God, today is the day I accept you as my Lord and Savior and I'm changing. I'm going to count to three today. And I want you to just take one simple step of faith and raise your hand as high as you can raise it. One, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. Only thing that matters is your relationship with the Lord. Two, God is calling you close to him. You've heard him calling. No one comes to the Father except being drawn by the Son. If that's you today, you hear the calling of God. He's calling you closer to himself. If that's you today, three, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Raise your hand as high as you can raise it. And somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. And the saints of God are rejoicing all over this building. The saints of God are clapping all over this building. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we won't. another call. I want to make another call. If you say, Pastor Dante, I, I know Jesus, but I haven't been living right. I know, I know Jesus, but I haven't been living to my full potential. Listen, I want somebody to come and pray with you. I'm not going to call you to this altar. I'm not going to call you up here, get your clothes all wet. But if you say, Pastor Dante, I, I haven't been living to my full potential. I know Jesus. I have a relationship with him. I feel God saying, come back home, baby. Come back home, daughter. Come back home, son. If that's you today, do me a favor. Just with your head bowed and your eyes closed, just slip your hand up in the air. I believe somebody's going to come and pray with you. Come on. Come on. I believe somebody's coming to pray with you. Come on. I believe somebody's coming to pray with you. God said, this is the season to come back. This is the season of relationship. This is the season. I'm not trying to pick on you. It's still one more. It's still one more. Raise your hand if that's you. If you want to come back to Jesus today, it's still at least one more. Raise your hand if that's you today. I believe God is going to change your life. I believe your life could be radically different on today if you accept the real Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's more powerful than you think. He can change you. He can fix it. He can turn it around. But you got to trust him today. Last thing, last thing, I'm gonna do this real quick. If you say, Pastor Dante, I, I know Jesus or I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, and I, I feel like I have a relationship with him, I'm not backslidden, but I, I need a church home. I need to be connected with a church body. I need to be connected with a church family. Listen to me right here. You need to be connected with a body. You need a pastor. You need somebody who loves you enough to tell you to stop doing that. You need somebody who will pray with you. Listen, I, I, I might not be able to be able to eat chicken wings with everybody. I'm sorry about that. But I tell you what I will do. I'll pray with you. I'll connect with you. And I'll point you back to Jesus. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. But if that's you today and you say, I need a church home, Pastor Dante, I, I want to be connected to a church home. If that's you today, I want you to stand up on your feet. I want you to take all your stuff. Come up here and take my hand. I want to be your pastor. I want to be your pastor. Come on. Come on, man. Danica. Everybody say, hey, Danica. 
Danica, welcome to God Chasers. I'm going to switch it to this young lady right here. She's going to get some information from me, okay? God bless you. Welcome to God Chasers. Hey, hey, tell everybody your name. Everybody say, hey, Carly. Carly, welcome to God Chasers. I'm so happy you're here. Follow these young ladies over here. Come on, come on, come on. If that's you, wait, wait. Break that music. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not intending to embarrass you. You need to make a commitment. The problem with most of us today is that we don't, we don't commit to anything. And you haven't seen fruit because you haven't made a commitment. If that's you today, man, do me a favor. Just walk up here. Take my hand. I believe that you're supposed to be connected to one of the most amazing church experiences in San Antonio. If that's you today, come on. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet and come take my hand. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. They're clapping for you. They're clapping for you. They're clapping for you. They're clapping for you. Okay, hear my heart right here. Get connected to a body. Get connected to a body. This is one of the best bodies to be connected to because, listen, if you're perfect, raise your hand in here. Right. And if anybody would have raised their hand, I would have just pointed them out like, you a liar. Because that's the kind of pastor I am. No. But you need to be connected to a body. You need to be connected to a body of believers. Not, not only because of me, but because of all of them. Because I, I want you to understand something. There is somebody in this room that's like you. Here's the magic to church. You ready for this? This is the magic. This is the, this is the secret sauce. You in there somewhere. And if you find you, if you find you and you can connect with you, all of a sudden, you can start speaking into you. Oh, hear me right here. All of a sudden, you can start telling you, girl, you can do it. Girl, you can make it. I believe in you. Are you ready? Girl, that outfit is cute. We're going to praise God today. And if you can find somebody that's like you, then you can speak into them and they can speak into you. That's why you don't just come to church on Sundays. You, it's a community. It's a community. Can anybody testify? It's a community. It's a community. Become a, a part of the body. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand up on your feet. Let's give God some praise in here. Come on. Come on. All over this building. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Not because I said so, but because he's good. Come on. Not because I said so, but because he's good. Come on. Not because I said so, but because he's righteous. Come on. Come on. Is the Lord good? Is the Lord good? Is the Lord good? 